Because I feel like this was kind of a short video, I'm going to close this video out with me doing massive abuse to this pot as it's wrapped up with no wrapping in it, just to see if it breaks. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? As some of you might know along with this YouTube channel, I also have my own website where I sell a lot of my own work. And as you can imagine, especially with the holiday season, I've been selling a bunch of my own work on that website. I think I've packaged about 50 pots this week alone. Along with this, someone on Instagram messaged me and said, hey, how do you package your pots? Can you make a video on it? And I kind of figured I might as well just turn on the recorder and show you guys how I pack and deliver my pots. So today I'm going to show you how I personally pack and deliver my pots, along with a couple of the tricks that I know as well. It saves you a little bit of money with some of these tricks every single time you package and ship a pot, but over the course of like a month, if you save yourself a dollar per package and you've shipped 100 pots, well you've essentially just saved yourself or made $100. Disclaimer, before we get started, I just want to say that this is what works for me, this is my own personal experience, I've been packing and shipping a bunch of pots recently and this is what has been working for me so far. Nothing has come in the mail broken. I've received no messages like, oh my god, my stuff's broken. It's been working for me fairly well, but if you have a different way of packaging and shipping your pots that works better for you, first of all, what are you doing here? This video is just what works for me. This is not the end all be all say all of what works for everybody across the entire planet. That being said, this video is only going to go over how to actually pack your pottery to make sure it survives and reach its destination safely. I'm not going to go over how I ship my pottery, how I save money on shipping my pots, what system I use. I'm not going to go over any of that. This video is literally just how to make sure your pottery is safe in the mail and delivered to its destination without breaking into a million little pieces. That's like a whole different video. Let's start off with some of the stuff that you're going to need before you even think about shipping. Number one, you're going to need a box and some packing material. At the moment, for a lot of my packing materials, I'm using packing peanuts. I'm gonna be changing fairly soon because these are not environmentally friendly. You can use whatever you want. Granted, I would heavily suggest finding a much more eco-friendly option. You're also gonna need some packing tape and some kind of material to wrap your actual piece in. You can use paper, you can use stuffing paper, newspapers. A lot of people use bubble wrap. I personally hate plastic. I don't like using bubble wrap, so what I use is this stuff right here. This is called Ranpack. It's 100% made of paper. Even the pieces that come with it on the side here are also made out of paper. The box that it came with was 100% recyclable. I love this stuff for a couple of reasons. Number one, as I said, I hate plastic. And number two, it ends up stretching into this weird die cut kind of honeycomb cell pattern. So when you wrap your piece in it, You end up using literally no tape on the actual product itself because these type of die cut honeycomb shapes end up kind of clutching into each other. So now I just don't really need tape to package this up. This saves me a little bit of money on tape and I feel much better about the environment knowing that I'm using Ranpack, seeing as like I, I don't use plastic, I just hate using plastic in general. It also comes in this huge roll and every single sheet kind of stretches like this. So this lasts about three times longer than any bubble wrap would. So, I mean, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but if you have the chance, I would get you one of these. This helps the planet, it helps your pocket. I love this stuff. Now that we've gotten all your materials out of the way, it's time to start building your box from base. A little potter tip here, I mean it's not just a potter tip, it's like an anybody tip, but it's a pottery channel, what do you want from me? Personally, whenever I tape stuff, I like to start down here and stretch it all the way past down to the other side here. Don't make the mistake of just taping a little piece right here and calling it a day. If you don't have something for these flaps to hold on to, technically speaking, these little spots right here are still compromised. You see that? It came right off, right? So make sure that you actually tape it way past the 
point of this little seal right here. This gives it something to grab onto. I usually put an extra strip right here to really secure it down so I have kind of a cross section thing going on. And on top of that, I make sure that these flaps are stuck real nice to the tape by turning it over and pushing down to make sure that the tape and the flaps stick together. This way, it's really secure now. The second piece of major advice that I can give you is to make sure that you have a box that's a little bit bigger than the piece itself. For example, if I were to fit a mug in here, this is fine. This is actually plenty of space to move around. This means that all the packing peanuts and all the shipping stuff that I'm going to be putting in here, if it is one or maybe even two small items, are going to fit in here just fine with the absorbent materials in here to really help it stay secure through its journey. But there's definitely some people in the world that understand that the smaller the box, the more money they can save on shipping. And because of this, they'll try and pack big things like this in here, and it'll obviously touch the sides. Touching the sides is a major no-no in the packing world, especially for pottery. As a general rule, you want something very absorbent in between the layer of your work and the box itself. You're going into this assuming that they're going to throw this around. I don't care if it's your mother's, brother's, uncle's, cousin's, sister's mother's who's running the company. You have to assume that they're going to throw it around, otherwise you're going to have a bad time once it gets to the house of the recipient. Even if they're not going to throw it around, you're way better safe than sorry. The size of the box really matters because as a general rule, the more space you have in between the piece itself and the absorbent material on the outer layer of that piece before it reaches the box, the safer the piece is. For example, I put a bunch of packing material in the box and instead of putting this cup here in the middle of the box where I can fill the void here with a bunch of packing material, I put it a little bit to the side and off center. This way it's actually touching the cardboard thin surface of the box where if it gets damaged a little bit, the energy is not going to have anything to go through with the absorbent material. It's going to impact this pot directly. This means that if they throw it around and hit something, let's say this hammer for instance. No, don't do it. If something in the outside world ends up hitting the side of this box, it's probably gonna destroy this pot. Look, it's done. Imagine somebody threw this pot around and your customer has now received this pot in the mail, all because you didn't put enough absorbent packing material in between the piece and the box itself, because you decided to use a smaller box, which means that you saved a little bit of money on shipping, but now you have a broken piece as opposed to putting it directly in the middle of the box with plenty of packing material around it. came out fine, and I just pounded the heck out of this box with the hammer, as opposed to that one solid pound I did earlier with that piece that broke. And that was honestly just a difference in between having the pot dead center and having lots of material around it, versus having it to the side a little bit where it touches the box directly. You're really just trying to have it float in this packing material. If you don't do that, you're definitely going to end up with something like this. As an extra tip for some potters out there, something like this is extremely basic. This is just a basic teacup that I made and it's fairly easy to wrap. This is enough layers to make an absorbent layer, especially along with some of those packing peanuts I showed you earlier. But if you're shipping something like a mug with a handle on it, you're probably going to have this nice protruding piece right here. A small potter tip for those of you who are packing something like this out there, it's a good idea to not only wrap this, but also wrap it a little bit extra around the handle. Earlier, you saw me fold some of this into some of the pieces here, right? Well, this fold would probably go more so around the handle than it would something like this. This is just purely cylindrical. It has no protruding pieces. But as for a mug, if you are going to wrap this, you might want to fold over some of your padding somewhere along the handle. Like I was talking about earlier with the box being a little bit too close to the product itself, you want a little bit of extra padding along right here because this, of course, is protruding from the piece, which means it's going to be a little bit closer to the edge of the box itself. So I'm going to wrap this here, put this here, tuck this in here, and when I decide to wrap it, I'm just going to make sure the handle is extra taken care of, folding some of the pieces by that handle. See? 
now it's all good to go. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. I just wanted to give you one very small example of how I personally pack my pots. It's pretty much all about making sure that your piece is suspended in a lot of packing material. It doesn't have to be an ungodly amount. You don't need an extra big box. Technically speaking, if you did get an extra big box, it would have a better chance of survival, but you would then just be wasting money and more packing materials as you go along. It's all about having a little bit more space and suspending that piece. So what I usually do is I fill the bottom of the box box up with packing material, put something absorbent right on top of it, and then with a wrapped piece, put it right there and fill the rest of the box with packing material right before I boxed it up, all while making sure the tape is nice and secure on the outside, going a little bit past the flaps. After I slap a label on there, it's all good to go. But thank you again for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my personal artwork, the links are always down below. My website, my Instagram, the podcast that me and Lindsay do for the art channel. If you like this type of content and you want me to do more, click all the buttons down below. You, you, you guys know how YouTube works. You got it. You got it. Because I feel like this was kind of a short video, I'm going to close this video out with me doing massive abuse to this pot as it's wrapped up with no wrapping in it. Just to see if it breaks. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy that. I love your Dirty Potter faces. Enjoy this little montage of me just beating the living heck out of this thing. And I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Thank you for your patronage. I'm about to do like every kid in the high school bathroom with no direction in his life and just destroy this pot.